What's up, Vapers? Thanks for checking out Daily Vape TV. My name is Nick, and it's Fresh Build Friday. That's right, it's that time of the week again where we get you ready for the weekend with a brand new coil build. Now, this video was delayed a few days, and I do have to apologize for that. I got a little boo-boo when I went to originally record this one for you guys, but it's here finally, and I have a really exciting build to show you guys today. Now, this is one of those coils that has a lot of buzz on the internet, pun totally intended, by the way, uh, but I just wanted to show you guys because it seems like a pretty simple build, but you don't often see it built on a dripper. Most of the time you see it on the sub tank coils. I just got finished doing the hive wire coils from coil art and I wanted to do kind of investigate a little bit further into this matter. And from what I've seen, I haven't seen a whole lot of videos on doing a hive wire coil build. So here we are. Let's go ahead, grab your wick, your wire, your tools, your mod, your addy, all that good stuff. Let's go down to the close up view and build it up. All right guys, so as you can see here, we have some 28 gauge Canthal wire, A1, nothing too special, nothing too fancy, but uh, it should be an interesting little build today. So what I'm gonna do first is get about four feet of this stuff and cut it off and straighten it out. Now the next step we're gonna do here is take the other end of our wire here and put it in the chuck of the drill. So just go ahead and loosen that up, making sure we got it all in there nice and secure. Just like that. I'm gonna just run my fingers along this wire to get out any of the kinks, and we're gonna pinch just the other end here so we have no slack in the wire. Next thing we wanna do here is twist it up. So you want a pretty tight twist on this stuff. You don't have to get it super, super, super tight. Next thing, just again, kind of double up that wire, uh, straighten it out a little bit so you can get all the slack out and we're gonna cut it right in half. Just like that. So now that we have our two strands of wire, we're gonna undo the chuck of the drill here, take both strands of wire and put them in the chuck of the drill. Tighten them back down. Okay. Now we're just gonna hold on to the other end of these two here. And real quick, we're gonna pop the drill in reverse and then we're gonna spin them up backwards. Right about there, that looks pretty good to me. Um, honestly, I don't feel like there's any sort of rhyme or reason behind uh, you know, why you wanna twist it backwards or whatever, but that's just what I read on the internet. So that's why I'm showing you guys. Um, so it looks like we got enough here for our coils. Let's just go ahead and clip off all that uh, excess wire there we can get rid of our drill and we can start wrapping some coils. So I've got my three millimeter jig all ready to go here. Let's just go ahead and spin up some of these coils. Um, I'm actually gonna use the jig part of the jig uh, instead of just the post today. And we're gonna do, uh, let's do seven wraps. That seems like plenty enough surface area here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this just looks like a, a crazy mess, but if you get this stuff nice and tight, you can kind of find that little area where it just looks nice and even. So that's what I try to do here. Um, next thing, we're just gonna take out the coil, make sure we got enough lead space and clip that piece of wire like so. And we're gonna make another coil. So there you go guys, we have some pretty nice looking hive coils. They're not the prettiest looking coils ever, but you know what? Uh, this is all about flavor and I think we're gonna get good flavor off of them. So let's bring in our mod real quick. Let my camera focus for a second. And we're just gonna do the installation just like any other coil installation out there. Let me get my screwdriver right up against those posts. And you wanna just tighten this down. Now this is 28 gauge wire, so I'm kind of weary to really clamp this stuff down super hard, but since there are basically four strands of it going through those posts, uh, you should be okay with just tightening them down like you normally do. So get it good and, and snug inside the post holes there. Looks like we're pretty good here. And snip off the excess, watch the eyes. And I'm just gonna quickly kind of straighten this stuff out here. If you end up having a lot of 
uh, lead space or anything like that, then you can always just open up the terminal once again and just slide the, the lead back through and just tighten it up a little bit more, uh, which you might have to do that, but it's no big deal. So let's just go ahead and install our second coil. All right, we are looking good. I think we're in good shape here. Honestly, these coils are a little bit of a pain in the ass to work with, I gotta tell you. Um, just because there's so much wire and usually twisted wire gives you a hard time when it comes to making them nice and straight and even. Uh, I really couldn't get a good look to these coils. Perhaps the reason why they're not the most popular coils on the internet. But uh, let's go ahead and fire these babies up. Uh, let's start it off at 50 watts today. And just give it a little bit of heat here. Just like normal, we want to just ease up on the heat a little bit. Just want to get these coils warm and just try to fix any trouble spots, which I'm already noticing a few little hot spots in there. So just basically uh, work with them and see what we can do here as far as getting them to fire up nice and even. All right, so we are looking pretty good. I'm just gonna go ahead and bump the power up to about 75 watts. I think that's gonna be pretty good. Eh, 78 watts, that's, that's all right. Um, yeah, once again, uh, it's a little bit difficult to work with and the wire is just super duper springy even after I'm heating it. But overall, I'd say they're firing up pretty evenly and uh, yeah, they look pretty good. So let's go ahead and wick these things. All right, guys, so we are looking good. Let's go ahead and give this thing some power and see some vapor production. Oh yeah, look at those fireworks. I'm actually gonna turn it up a little bit here. Let's go up to 100 watts. Woo, all right. 100 watts, vapor production test. There we go. We are looking good. Let's go ahead, go back to the main screen, have a quick vape on this thing, and we'll talk about it some more. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the build section of the video. Now let's talk about the coils that we just built in this thing here. So my first category, as always, is the heat. And the heat on this one, I would say, is on the low side of high. It's a moderate to high heat uh, index here, but honestly, with the airflow wide open on this Velocity V2, I'm really getting uh, a nice moderate warmth out of it. Uh, I am vaping it pretty high. It is at 100 watts right now. The final resistance came out to 0 0.27 ohms, and the voltage it's running at right now is 5.21 volts. So relatively high voltage, relatively high wattage. Everything seems to be hitting really nice for me. It's a nice warm to hot kind of vape and it's pretty satisfactory. So there we go. My next category is the ramp up and ramp down time. Real quick, I'm just going to take a pull off of this thing and check out the ramp down time. So since I'm vaping at such a high wattage, I really don't have a lot of ramp up time to this one. It's almost instantaneous. I could say about maybe half a second before you really feel that power kick in. The ramp down time, however, is a little bit longer than I would have liked. I get about an aggressive, you know, two second uh, sizzle and then it kind of calms down a lot. Um, the wicking on this one just doesn't seem to quite keep up and I can kind of attribute that to the fact that uh, the coils don't really hold a lot of juice. That's kind of one of the reasons why I like the staple coil coils and the framed Claptons and stuff like that is because it just has a lot of room inside the actual coil itself to hold a lot of juice. This one here is just kind of, you know, basic twisted wire, not a lot of nooks and crannies for that juice to hide. Uh, the wicking I made a little bit extra tight just to try to uh, kind of 
hit all the surface area on the inside of these coils because it is kind of uneven and it just doesn't feel like it's enough almost. So uh, that kind of fact just takes away from this coil a little bit. However, uh, moving on to my third category here, it's the difficulty of this build. This build is super easy. Honestly, if anyone out there has a drill, you can twist up some hive wire, no problem. And I feel like uh, that's kind of why this coil isn't so much talked about on the internet. You know, not a lot of build videos out there for this one. One, just because it's kind of boring and basic and ugly and just it's not that great it's okay it's a little bit gimmicky that's kind of why I feel like a lot of companies are throwing them in their coils for sub tanks and stuff like that because it's pretty easy to build and it's just something else to advertise basically um, Leading me to my final category, yeah, the flavor. Uh, flavor's okay. I'm getting a uh, decent flavor out of this one for Canthal. Usually I like to build with Nichrome, however, I feel like this one with Nichrome just would be a little bit too low resistance for its own good. I'm vaping on some Infinite Ohms Ampere. This is a green apple mango flavor and it is top notch. I've been vaping this out of the uh, tanks that I have that I'm trying out for uh, the coil art coil section of my vlog and I really am familiar with this flavor by now and it's it's decent flavor out of this build uh, not great I don't know maybe it's just uh, my my own imagination but I feel like I get better flavor with nichrome than I do with canthal Maybe that's just me, but hey, you know, I just want to, you know, let you guys know what I'm thinking. So I, I get decent flavor out of it. You get that nice tart, sweet notes to it. Uh, but I feel like a dessert vape on this type of coil here just isn't going to work out as well. Anyways, guys, that about does it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. Of course, leave me a comment in the box below of what you think of this coil build, whether or not you want to try it out for yourself, or if you have a suggestion for a future Fresh Build Friday video, then make sure you drop it down. Down there. Honestly, I heavily rely on your guys' input for what you want to see on my channel, so if you have a suggestion for a future build, then make sure you drop a comment below. Also, check out the advocacy links I have in the description. I have them down there for you, so you can fight for your right to vape. Stand up, let your voice be heard, and all that good stuff. Also, check me out on my different social medias. I have Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you follow me on there. Like my page on Facebook. Check out my Snapchat. And if you want to give me a couple of bucks on, on Patreon, that would be awesome as well. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for joining me. And as always, vape on.